And I guess there really are an infinite number of ways to try and solve a problem in this game. Arc Media was a Canadian software publisher founded in 1993 in Toronto, and they published over 300 software titles from a variety of genres, including kids' entertainment, stock media libraries, reference software covering a variety of subjects, and puzzle games. But apart from a few other details that I will explain shortly, as well as this archived webpage, that's all I could find about this company's details and history. Since I grew up and lived one country down, the only reason I even heard of Arc Media as a kid was because I was given this mysterious software disc called Dinosaurs. Considering that at the time I was obsessed with dinosaur-related computer software, such as Knowledge Adventure's 3D Dinosaur Adventure, Dinosaur Adventure 3D, a completely different title from the same publisher, and even Eyewitness Virtual Reality Dinosaur Hunter, I should not be surprised. But as soon as I found out that this title was from a Canadian publisher, judging from the dialect spoken in these titles... If dinosaurs lived so long ago, how did we find out about them? I guessed that this title must have been a gifted souvenir from my dad from a trip to Canada he took, as he told my family about it around the time I first got that disc. While all other dinosaur titles I have played had a distinct name, though still not original, this one just says DINOSAURS, with nothing to distinguish it from anything else whatsoever. So unless I had any other line of reference, I would have no idea about its history. This title was developed, no wait, created, as the publisher likes to put it, by Mars Software, which gives me another clue into finding out about where it originally came from. As I found out, it wasn't called Dinosaurs, it was called World of Dinosaurs, as part of a World of Animals series, which also consists of insects, reptiles, whales, and wild cats. Where the rabbit hole really began for me was a demo section on the disc, showing for other ARC Media titles. It contains five sections of titles, showcased by the same female voice with a subpar microphone setup. There really is no easier way to learn how to concoct drinks, from the simple two-step process to the truly exotic recipes. Regardless of presentation though, some of the titles here sounded very intriguing, especially the ones with quick-time video demonstrations, even if the subjects themselves aren't nearly of my interest. Like, I will never have any interest in gardening or learning about fighter jets, and if I don't want to drink alcoholic beverages, I don't want to make alcoholic beverages either. On top of that, as well as a couple of them being outdated buyer's guides, some of the title's subject matters are just plain bullshit, like Chinese New Year animals, astrology, and even the meaning of your palm. Ever wonder what those lines in your palm mean? No, I never have, and I never will. But others are of subjects I am curious enough about to bite the bullet later on, including learning about space, having a recipe book on hand, and acquiring a sound and music library. Considering the age of those titles and demos, it only goes to show just how powerful demo advertisements really are, regardless of how much time passes since they were first released. Another example in my case being Treasure Planet Battle at Procyon. I had a demo of that game with a Treasure Planet promotional CD from McDonald's for the longest time before I bought the game on Steam around 15 years later. Thankfully, many ARC Media titles are still being sold today by shovelware publisher SelectSoft, which is why I easily bought some of the titles that originally intrigued me, but others... weren't so lucky. The aforementioned demo program contains a whole entire Games and Puzzles section containing three titles, none of which are sold by SelectSoft or any other publisher, or even hosted on any Abandonware website I could find. There's this Tangram game, which there are now literally countless Tangram games to find online, even though it's not that particular one. There's Block and Dock, which claims it's a modern take on block puzzles, which existed for centuries, but I couldn't find anything online that plays similarly to what the demo provides. If anyone knows of any examples, let me know in the comments. And then there's this anomaly, Blockhead. 
Even the demo says that it's an all-new puzzle game, at least for the time. So as far as I can tell, this is a completely original product. When I first saw it, I had absolutely no idea how it plays. Even Block and Doc's demo was understandable enough for me to figure out how it works. But this one, no way. The only way for me to truly find out how it works is to just acquire a copy of the game and see for myself. When I tried looking up the game, I got a bunch of unrelated results, including on Amazon of this 1950 stacker game of the same name. Even when looking up Arc Media alongside, I got nothing. It's only when I looked up Blockhead Interactive Puzzle that I finally get something. A single eBay listing. Now, normally, Dankpods taught me to never use eBay, ever. But in this case, there is literally no other way for my curiosity to check this game out unless I bite the bullet on this listing. Especially if it's as reasonably priced as it is here, and it would ship to me domestically. The game case here says that it's a game of matching wits and matching corners, and after studying the demo more closely, I found that for each move made, the moving tile and the tile it moves towards seem to switch places with each other, which made me finally get what it's all about, though I will still have to see for myself, especially considering the developer's insistence that it's very challenging, despite the name. I have been preparing this script before biting the bullet on this eBay listing, as well as this one of only two Block and Dock listings I could find. Not because I don't trust eBay, but because I just want to make sure nobody else stumbling across it wants the last remaining available copy of the game, pretty much anywhere in the world, for themselves. As you can see, I actually care more about others than myself. But at the same time, these games would most likely be lost to history if it weren't for my efforts to, basically, build up a modest ARC media collection. And since I am spending money on a game this obscure, I might as well let everyone know of its existence, just so it doesn't end up completely gone to history. If you're a regular viewer of this channel, you may rant about how this video is not Sonic related, but much like how I once uploaded a screen recording of the Billy Mays Green Now commercial because I couldn't find one on YouTube, I want to let everyone know of this obscure original puzzle game, even if it's terrible, forgettable, and better off in the trash and forgotten. And here it is. The Plutonian Unicorn of PC Puzzle Games. Every person who replied to my announcement to do this video told me that they have never heard of this game. And to be quite honest, I actually wouldn't be surprised if they went further and accused me of pulling a My Uncle Works at Nintendo kind of stunt and said that the game was fake. But here it is, it's real, and I don't know how to replicate the movement and lighting required to fake what you're looking at right now with CGI. Don't even try, Captain Disillusion. So all I have to do now is to carefully unbox this product because it is just so holy and fragile. I just don't want anything to happen to it. Well, the seal isn't as hard to tear off. It probably already has been broken. The top sort of came off, but... Oh, it's finally off. Yes. Gotta be careful with it, though. Now, surprisingly, most ARC titles I have tried work remarkably well on modern hardware, especially the SelectSoft titles. But there are a few earlier exceptions, like um, some of the earlier Magician Secrets discs that I downloaded from archive.org, simply because they're 16-bit and won't work on my 64-bit system, such as in the case with this Blockhead CD. Now, it may look like I'm... I'll have to switch over to a 32 or 16-bit version of Windows just to get this game to run. But, if I go to Catalog, I could click Block 32 for a 32-bit version of the program, and it should work just fine. So hopefully this thing works, 
and I'll actually get to play the game. What? What's happening here? Why isn't the game launching? Well, as it turns out, if I use the ISO file I just ripped for archival purposes and mount it here, the game actually does launch. But I didn't figure it out at the time, so I initially resorted to a Windows 2000 virtual machine, which is what you're about to see here. So, I'm going to launch this application from here and see what happens. And here it is. I can now figure out how how this how to play this game. So the objective of the game is to move and rotate the tiles until each corner has a matching color with the corner next to it. To move a tile, click on the center of the tile and hold down the mouse while dragging. When the tile is in position of another highlighted tile, release the mouse to complete the swap. To rotate to rotate the tile, click on the top corner to rotate it 180 degrees clockwise or click on the bottom corner to rotate it in the opposite direction. Click on the right corner to rotate it 90 degrees clockwise, or click on the left corner to rotate it in the opposite direction. Sounds like a bit to get used to, but I'll figure it out. Okay, here we go. Sorry if I'm being silent. I, I usually play games silently, so I may do post voiceover while you're watching me play this. On top of live streams, that right there is why I don't do Let's Plays either. But I will seep my gameplay voice over this footage here and there while I discuss my thoughts on the game. So first of all, the name, Blockhead. Sounds simple, right? Well, according to the demo, not really, as it's a very clever, subversive puzzle that would have you begging for answers and even rage quitting. I finished my first puzzle quickly enough. Congratulations, you solved the puzzle. But the second puzzle I tried took up the majority of my playthrough. This game has three visual styles with fitting sound effects for each one. Metal, wood, and stone. And it also has three music tracks to listen to as you try to solve the puzzle. I wanted to try out a puzzle for each visual style, and because of the equal number of each, I would like to associate each music track with its respectively listed style. Actually, it was also my second puzzle that got me to come up with most of my strategies for the game. So, what I think I'm getting at so far is to... My strategy here is to look at two corners, and then find matching corners on each adjacent square. However, some of them were really half-baked in hindsight. Okay, now I'm gonna start from this tile on each corner, on each side, and then work my way from here to get a full complete picture. Oh, I forgot the top tile could and may have to be moved in some of these puzzles. But as I was doing future playthroughs off camera, I found that one of my best strategies is this. So if I don't want to constantly reshuffle all the time, I just take a look at sides, and if I can't find any opposing sides that the tiles could connect to, I just put them off to the side or the corner, so that nothing would connect to it nothing would be able to connect to it. Speaking of reshuffling, one major detail I noticed is the reshuffling speed here. Normally, it's kinda slow, like right here, but... Another thing I noticed is that when the music is off and you reshuffle, the reshuffling process goes much quicker. In fact, the whole entire game plays much quicker with the music off. I'm speeding up normal gameplay here because I didn't record any footage without music, but it's amazing how much faster you wait for moves without it. Anyway, back to the gameplay. Each tile can have a random corner color configuration, and with the ability to not only move any tile anywhere, as long as it swaps with the other, but rotate any tile in any way, 
playing this game for long enough has finally got me to say these two remarks. I guess there really are an infinite number of ways to try and solve a problem in this game. Now I'm starting to get curious. Can a puzzle game be too complicated? I mean, these guys weren't wrong. A couple examples of tricks the game pulls up are when you think you're going to match two colors with the same two colors together, when you find out that one half has switched around. And in other cases, this happens. Oh, oh I just realized. Um, I can't have these two because there needs to be a green here and another green here, which is physically impossible with this kind of setup. With all that said, I don't think I'd be allowed to chastise puzzle games for being too hard, considering the fact that I'm the kind of guy who prefers to play easier games because I can't stand the thought of losing in general, but this game was still engaging enough for me to not rage. Just expect to take a long time to complete a certain puzzle. This is why the developers added in a save load option so you could save a certain game to get back to later. Personally, I never used this feature because I really wanted to finish all my puzzles in one go, but I may consider it soon enough. Overall, if you want something that will really twist your mind and make you think after getting sick of puzzle games getting too easy, this is not a bad game to try out. Now, before I go any further, there's this game mode. Let's see what the presets are all about. They're just numbered. Let's just go with one for now. Oh, so they're timed and based on move sets. Okay. The whole point of this game mode is to finish one of 10 presets in the fastest time and the lowest number of moves. And when you finish a certain preset and make it to the top three, you will have to enter your name to make it onto the listed leaderboard. And now, I'm going to check out its demo to see if it's any different. Now, the soundy effects disc I had probably has the same demo lineup. But just for the hell of it, here is more detail about Arc Media itself. When I tried this installer wizard from the disc on my VM, I found that all it did was plaster shortcuts to the C drive, linking to files on the disc itself, which, apart from the QuickTime install, is a very lazy way to install games and to implement a disk check if you ask me. Fortunately, I got a much better way to install the game, and I will show you after I show you Block and Dock. And here's Block and Dock. Now, as I have said before, this game claims to be on an electronic version of old block puzzles pre-existing for centuries, but I couldn't find anything online that plays like this. So that's most of the reason why I got this game on eBay and will be preserving it in much the same way I'm preserving Blockhead. Now, before I unbox this gem, I just want to let you know that I may do the same thing to iMarble's Tangram game if I ever find it, even though there are now newer Tangram games online for me to find and play. So here we go. Oh, yeah. it came off, but... Eh. Oh. Now, just like with Blockhead, I could get it to run from ISO, but not from disk but I didn't know that at the time, so again, I've been relying on my Windows 2000 VM to play my first few levels of this game. Okay, now we can play it. A dedicated iMarble logo. Can you make through- Can you make your way through an eerie swamp? Have you 
you've got the wits to map your way through the galaxy to a faraway space dock? Is there any room to relax by the dock in your yellow ducky? It's tough out there, but it's up to you. Engage each of the 45 puzzles through the environment of your choice. Float, cruise, or swim up to the dock, and dock it, get from bow to stern, or map the pier. There are countless possibilities. Plan your strategy and have fun. Apart from the instantaneous move effect, which honestly disappointed me compared to the smooth sliding in the demo, with the same ridiculous sound effect, and that unenthusiastic yippee at the end of each puzzle, yippee, yippee. The biggest gripe I have with this game is the severe lack of puzzles. The game advertises 45 of them, but they are all split up into those three different categories. And even worse, when you click the random button, it just randomly chooses from one of the pre-made puzzles already provided. Not even the difficulty slider gives me three versions of the same puzzle. They're just split off and categorized based on the difficulty level. And that all means once you finish all 45 puzzles, you're pretty much done. And unless you forget how to solve all of them, there is no replay value in this game whatsoever. As much as I am happy to have the only electronic block puzzle game I could find, if I Marble's Tangram game would end up the same way, I wouldn't mind trying out one of those other Tangram games instead. Now, because I could never find any external information about these pieces of abandonware beforehand, I have uploaded them to archive.org, so check the link in the description if you want to check them out for yourself. To properly install Blockhead, first mount the ISO to a virtual disk drive, then create a separate folder inside any games folder you want your game to be installed on, and call that folder Blockhead. Then simply drag all the files from the ISO into that folder. Then simply go into the folder titled Block, create a shortcut of block32.exe, and move it to your desktop or wherever. It's just that easy. Well, actually, every time you launch the program in 64-bit Windows, you'll get a critical error saying rtkkyf.x32 is either not designed to run on Windows or contains an error, but once you dismiss the error, the program will launch, but with the last window you had open covering it. Just bring that program into focus and you're all set. Oh, but if I run the program as is, there's a very likely chance this would happen. Actually, never mind, the game just crashed. From my extensive testing, the only way I could possibly think of to effectively solve this issue is to just play the game without any music. To install Block and Dock, the same set of instructions apply. Mount the ISO, make a game folder titled Block and Dock, and copy everything to that folder. Only now make a shortcut for 32setup.exe, and apart from that same rtkkyf.x32 error message, as well as a UAC prompt preceding it, it should work just fine, this time without having to set up any tweaks without crashing. For these two programs, the provided QuickTime installation files are only necessary to install if you want to check out the Arc Media catalog, as well as view the Arc Media opening logo in Blockhead. Now, just like with every Arc Media title I own, these two games have no idea what any resolution higher than 640x480 means. Therefore, rendering window boxes around the images, I don't know how to solve that issue other than to go to Properties on the Executable, and sets run this game in 640x480, but then it stretches the whole game to my 16.9 monitor, which looks wrong. So basically, the higher resolution your monitor, the bigger the problem becomes. On my 1080p monitor, the game is still perfectly playable. At 1440p, the window boxes are starting to become a lot more noticeable, but the game is still playable. At 4K, you really start to notice how much of a problem this becomes, and at 8K, you pretty much have to hunch forward and squint your eyes in order to play the game. Bottom line, just play the game on a lower resolution monitor in order to comfortably play it, or just set properties to play in 640x480 and deal with the stretching. Now, for those of you who use LaunchBox, here's how to properly integrate these games there. In LaunchBox, click Add, 
and type Blockhead in the title field. Now, I just know for certain that this game will never make it to the LaunchBox database, so here's what you have to fill out. Genre, Puzzle. Developer, iMarble. Publisher, Arc Media. For source, I use ISO because I sourced this from either pirated abandonware, or in this case, purchased abandonware, tick installed, and portable if you put the game in your LaunchBox installation. Under platform, type Windows. Under release type, set to released. And finally, under release date, I set it to June 30th, 1997, as from what I can tell, this is the earlier of the two games I talked about to be released. Then, in the controller support section, I set keyboard and mouse to required, as this game obviously doesn't have controller support. Now, onto media images. First, click Add Image, and go back to the Blockhead archive, and select Blockhead 1. Leave image type as is to box front. Then, add Blockhead 3, and set the image type to Cart Front Images Disk. Then, starting with the next image to add, go to the Blockhead for Steam and Launchbox folder I have also linked in the description, and add Blockhead Box Back, and set the image type to Box Back Images Box Back. Add Blockhead Gameplay Screenshots, and set to Screenshot Images Screenshot Gameplay. Add Blockhead Logo, and set to Clear Logo. And finally, add Blockhead Title Screen, and set to Screenshot Images, Screenshot Game Title. Now, go to Launching, click Browse on Application Path, and look for that Blockhead Executable I told you to look for earlier, you know, that Block32.exe file. Set that as the application to launch. Now, you can finally click OK. For Block and Dock, just set the same kind of details, but with the following changes. Change release date to December 31st, 1997, as it was the later title to be released, from what I can tell. For the images, rely on the Block and Dock archive, and the Block and Dock for Steam and LaunchBox folder in the same link as the respective Blockhead folder. And for launching, look for that Block and Dock executable from earlier, 32setup.exe, and use that. So, if you thought me giving out a tutorial on how to put two absolutely unheard of games into LaunchBox was crazy enough, how about this? I'm going to teach you how to put Blockhead and Block and Dock on the Steam Deck. First, go to desktop mode, obviously. I actually won't take any chances with Proton in this case, so what I recommend doing is to go to the Discover Store and download Lutris from there. If you downloaded the archives directly to your Steam Deck, the next thing you should do is to download Mount Unmount ISO from the Discover Store. Right-click the ISO file, hover over Mount Unmount ISO image, and click Mount. Click on Blockhead in the device's side menu to access it. Make a games folder, preferably in your home folder, and make another folder inside called Blockhead. Go back to the ISO file and copy everything inside to that folder. Well, almost everything. You will get an error message saying, The file or folder, Run Media Deck Blockhead QuickTime 2.5, does not exist. But that folder is virtually meaningless to gameplay, so actually copy everything except QuickTime 2.5 to that folder. Now, go to Lutris, click the plus icon, and click on Add Locally Installed Game. Type Blockhead in the name field, and select Wine from the Runner dropdown. Type 1997 in Release Year, and then click on Game Options. Click Browse next to Executable, and navigate to that Block32.exe file you copied to your Games folder. Now, you can click Save, and your game should appear. Don't worry if you don't see any images in Lutris, we're not going to use Lutris to launch this game. Instead, you should right-click on that game and click Create Steam Shortcut. You may have to restart Steam in order for the entry to show up in your Steam library. Now, when I tested this game out on Steam Deck, 
I found that it actually has nearly the opposite problem it has on my main Windows machine. If I turn music off, the audio starts glitching out before it eventually freezes up that way. Now, relaunch Steam, launch the game from it at least once, but do not launch any other game afterward until you follow this next step. Make a recent games shelf, and you will see Blockhead as the most recent game. Right click its thumbnail, and go to Manage Set Custom Artwork. Go to the Blockhead for Steam and Launchbox folder, and change file type from PNG to All Files, and select Blockhead Header.jpg. Next, right click the game in your sidebar and select Properties. Click on the blank icon and navigate back to that folder and switch file type from image files to all files. Select block.ico, go back to the part of your games library where the posters are. Look for blockhead with a blank poster, right click on it and select manage set custom artwork and select blockhead poster. Now click on the game and right click this empty area at the top and select custom background. Select Blockhead Hero, right click the plain text and select Set Custom Logo, and select Blockhead Logo. And finally, click the gear icon and select Manage Controller Layout. Click on the default Gamepad with Joystick Trackpad to change it. Select Mouse Only, and click Apply Layout. Click back to exit the screen, and now you're all set. Do all the same steps with Block and Dock, but with all the alterations I described before. And there it is, Blockhead. The best PC puzzle game you have never heard of. I hope my discovery of this gem will get more people to actually know about it.